Welcome back, Learning Bird. Now, in my last video, I went over some context stuff, and in case that was confusing, I've decided to make another video on context. So, I'm sure in your classes you'll go over context stuff about, you know, stuff about Russia and the Soviets, and all that stuff about Stalin and Trotsky, but if you haven't, I'll try to convey it in the simplest way possible for the students who might be struggling to grasp context and how it's relevant. I like to think I'm quite good at being simple, but anyway, here goes. So basically, there was this one dude, Nicholas II, uh, and he was the Tsar of Russia. He was like the emperor, and he was this big dick because he was all about totalitarianism, which for those of you who don't know, means that the state or the government has complete control over society. It's a dictatorship, it's not a democracy. So in the text, it's the original runner of the farm, Mr. Jones, that is the manifestation of Nicholas II, a dictatorial, or just a dick, of a runner of the farm. Luckily, however, the people of Russia revolted against Nicholas II, much like the animals on the farm rebelled against Mr. Jones. Now, Mr. Jones fled the farm in the same way that Nicholas II was forced to surrender his throne. Now, the Russian peasants, yes, peasants, because a whole bunch of them were slaves, they were led by the Bolsheviks, who were, for lack of a better word, good over people. <laughs> better people, passionate about equality, led by a man called Vladimir Lenin. Now, the equivalent to the Bolsheviks in the animal farm could be argued to be the pigs, uh, because initially everyone's intentions were true and good for the farm. Now, after Nicholas II fell, it was the Bolsheviks party that took a leadership role in Russia, led by one Vladimir Lenin, who was a communist revolutionary. Uh, this is the historical figure who, in the text, is reflected in Old Major, because both of them had really great ideas about what the future should be. They both felt passionately about equality, and both became ill and ultimately passed away, leaving behind a rivalry that would rally for power. Now, in Lenin's case, he left behind Leon Trotsky and Joseph Stalin, just as Old Major died in the text and left behind Snowball and Napoleon to adopt the leadership roles left in his absence. Now, Trotsky and Stalin then rallied for power. Trotsky had a closer relationship with Lenin and shared the same ideals. He was a passionate speaker and very well received throughout the country. Stalin, however, was quite different. He was manipulative and developed a reputation for working behind the scenes and pursuing his agenda more secretly. As you can probably guess, both these figures are also in animal form. Trotsky is Snowball, the passionate idealistic leader. And then you have Stalin, who is Napoleon, the antagonistic, manipulative opposition that works to thwart his competition. Much like Napoleon in the text, Stalin would take advantage of Snowball and badmouth him behind his back. An example of this is when it was Lenin's funeral, uh, but Trotsky was overseas at the time, thus absent for the funeral. Stalin took advantage of the symbolism of Trotsky's absence and he got all the publicity. He got all the attention and he used it to promote himself. So you can see how Snowball and Napoleon are very much like Stalin and Trotsky. Now, not long after this, Stalin rose to power, much like how Napoleon did on the farm. In the text, Napoleon only rose to power because he expelled Snowball from the farm, and historically it was a similar case. Trotsky kept silent, and Stalin continued to amass more and more power. The fundamental difference between Trotsky and Stalin was that Trotsky was a man of ideas, whereas Stalin was a man of action. Of violent action, I might add. And so naturally, he became the usurper. Much like Napoleon in the text, Stalin's reign consisted of an immeasurable amount of slaughter and dictatorship. The ideals of Vladimir Lenin, or Old Major, became long forgotten. But anyway, that's enough about context. I hope that gives you a pretty solid idea about why the text was written. It was written, I think, to encourage commentary on the historical politics of Russia. Of course, there's plenty more to be researched in regard to this, a thousand times more than what I could say in any one video, but I hope that's enough to get you started. Pretty much every character in the text parallels a person, a group of people, or even an idea in Russian history, so don't feel like this is all you can use. There's plenty more where this came from. The main thing you need to know is that yes, this text was inspired by actual events, and being in the form it is a short novel, it makes history a little more accessible and translatable for you, people like students, people who might not otherwise have been exposed to this stuff. So yeah, it's important to have an understanding of the past, which is actually an important theme in the text, the past and memory. Anyway, again, I hope that helps. Please rate this video if you found it helpful, and I'll see you again in my next video, which will discuss themes. If you're bored of me, feel free to browse Learning Bird and look at some other stuff. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.